Anna's around town. She's showing us some of the new things happening at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Hey, Anna. Exactly. I'm at the new seed bank, and I never knew getting seeds for Patty Vick would be so much fun. I'm getting rid of my aggression. Patty, what am I getting here for you? This is uh, Baptisia, or false indigo, mm -hmm. and it's one of the prairie species, one of 2,000 species that we hope to collect 20 populations across their range. Because it's highly endangered, right? But that's right. The uh, tall grass prairie is the most endangered ecosystem in the United States. What, what do you have over there quickly? This is called them? an aspirator, and this is how we Hit separate it. everything from the seeds themselves. Neat. So when we come back, we'll show you the new building, brand spanking new, the plant science building here. She said I could do whatever I wanted with the bugs. So, you know, I'm just smashing away. Larry Robin. All right. I'm volunteering. Thanks, Adam. Anna's around town. She's showing us some of the new things happening at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Hey, Anna. Well, for starters, they have a brand spanking new plant science building, and we're on its roof. This is the rooftop garden. I'm here with Greg Mueller, who is VP of Plant Science. Good morning. Good morning, Anna. So this is a gorgeous rooftop garden, but I know it's a think tank. What are you trying to figure out out here with plants? All right. Well, it's an evaluation garden. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of green roofs in the Chicago area. Most of them are not accessible to people, so we, we have this accessible anytime the garden's open, so 364 days a year, and we're trying a lot of new plants that haven't been used to increase the number of plants that can be grown on green roofs. Trying to figure out what will survive. Correct. Okay, perfect. So what about the building? Why did you need a, a, a plant science building? Well, you know, plants are essential for everything we, uh, life, mm -hmm. for our food, for our oxygen, for our water, but yet they're really imperiled by climate change, by land management, by invasive species. And so we're trying to understand how do plants and humans coexist in this wonderful Chicago area of 8 million people and wonderful forest preserves and everything else. Going back to the rooftop, why would it be important for people to have a garden, even in the city, with such lack of space on their roof? How does it benefit their lives? All right, so gardens are great. They reduce the heat island effect, so they're much cooler. They also provide insulation for the building below, and they provide wonderful habitat for plants, insects, other critters, and so they're a wonderful ecological thing, and they're beautiful. So they could reduce your electric bill? They yes. Do they help, help with that? Yes. Oh, interesting. All right. Right, so if you want to check out this new beautiful building in the entire Botanic Gardens here, Chicago Botanic Gardens, off Lake Cook Road, you can text us for more information. We'll be back with more Around Town this morning. Welcome back. Time now for Around Town. Anna's at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Hey, Anna, planting some uh, greenery this morning? Oh, I can't right hear. Out oh, there we go. Go on, I got you now? now. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we're at the Botanic Gardens, but we're doing Botanic Backyard right here live. And Nancy Clifton is here with me. We're going to talk about rain gardens. Right. What is that? Well, the rain garden actually might be called a downspout garden. Uh -huh. So you are collecting water that's on site, maybe off your downspout or from a paved area. And you have one right here. We have a rainwater glen. And you would site your home garden about 10 feet off your foundation. Mm -hmm. And then it drains very slowly, filters the water, and kind of purifies it before it, you know, it stays on site. So let's go to our questions. Our first question is from Brian. He's in Evanston. And he asks, is a rain garden a breeding ground for mosquitoes? Well, it's not because it's not the low spot of your garden where water collects. This is actually a garden that you're making about, as I mentioned, 10 feet off your foundation, maybe from a downspout. It's shallow but level with a rim that collects the water. And what's great is that should drain in about two days. Mm -hmm. The plants that you are planting actually kind of filter and store some of the water so it's not are these holding some of those water. Plants? These are some of those plants mm -hmm. that you would use for a rain garden. What is this? Um, this is actually Blazing Star. God, so this is uh, one that is really nice, great flowers. And what's also nice is they attract beneficial insects like a dragonfly that eat mosquitoes. So it's not a mosquito haven. It's not a breeder. Perfect. And the second question is from Barb from Roscoe. Her question is, what can I plant in a sunny rain garden location? Uh, and this is actually a sunny location, so we have a lot of the same plants. Mm -hmm. uh, besides the sun, think about maybe your soil. Is it heavy clay? Is it sandy? Does it drain? But also think about maybe prairie plants and native plants. A lot of these rain garden plants um, are out there. They're native. They are things that you're familiar with. Um, they might be this blazing star, the little okay. blue stem, cone flowers. Nancy, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. On our screen, you'll see the information about the Ball the Bazaar ball going bazaar. on. we got to say goodbye now, but there's your info. That's it for Around Town this morning. Back to you.